Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the 5% series for game week 6. The idea being you follow these general instructions and you'll hopefully finish top 5% globally which means you'll do alright in your mini league. Now somebody left a comment along the lines of last week I only had one green player which means it's a good buy this player and that was Haaland. Most of you have Haaland anyway. And it's true that of course none of you know what I'm doing in the background. So what I thought I would do is add a couple more colours to give you an idea of what's coming up. I've actually mapped out all 38 weeks and what I think which teams would be good to jump on and jump off. I say jump. Normally if we get a player it's with a view to be holding them for several weeks and if we get rid of a player it's so we won't have them for quite a while. So I know from a high level roughly what the moves are for the remaining 33 weeks that we have but of course things are going to change. So I just start with introducing what the colours are. So here's the colours. Yellow or gold, it was supposed to be a bit goldy. That's simply a new player, which means they're new to the system this week. You may want to get them if you're thinking of offloading another player. Green is a good buy, which means they should do very well either the next week or two, or they're good to buy because over the next few weeks, they're going to be quite good. And with this system, we're always taking a long-term view. Some content creators, quite quite rightly, they might have two or three players and they say, oh, this week we're going to have that one on the bench, then this one, and they work well together these game weeks. We're trying to take a more relaxed and macro view. where We want to roughly set up a squad. We'll make a few changes as we need to, either through injuries or suspensions, or somebody's not performing quite well. But we want to be quite relaxed about this. We're going for top 5%. We're not trying to win the whole thing. So I've added grey for bench fodder. Something I've seen in a couple of teams who I know are following the system, they have too many players that were supposed to be there just to sit on your bench. So the bench players, I wanted them to be players that are mostly going to play 90 minutes or nearly 90 minutes a week. I know I've not quite managed that. So they're going to sit on your bench and get one, two or three points most week. And if they come on, it's better than nothing. What you don't want to have is too many players that are grey. Ideally, three grey players and no more. So if you find watching this video you've got more than three grey players, you may want to think over the next few weeks, can I swap some of these around so I have fewer that are grey? You don't have to, but it's just a suggestion. But ideally, no more than three grey players. Blue, this is another new one. This is a player who is sellable soon. So I'm not saying you should sell them now, but if you're wanting to make several changes and you're wondering who you can sell to get in a player you particularly want, it's probably safe to play a blue player, sell a blue player. Because even though, sounds like a Smurf, doesn't it? Sell the Smurfs. Even though they may have a good game now or the next two weeks, long term, we're offloading them. It also means don't buy a player that's blue because you're going to have to sell them again soon. Orange means sellable. If you've got them now, you don't have to sell them. But if you want to sell them, that's absolutely fine. And they're good candidates to sell. And red is sell. This will either be through long term suspension or injury or else performing really bad. So they're the colours. I will try and allude to them as and when we're going through it. And then something else, another comment that I found quite amusing. Armitted Shanks wrote, I won't read the whole thing out, but say I won't lie, I was disappointed not to see Sun become an option. So lots of content creators were jumping on the Sun bandwagon. She just got a hat-trick and they're at home to Sheffield United, Tottenham Moir. But he's also disappointed that I didn't have the Luton keeper, Kamaski, to either offload Turner or Onana, who's currently stuck with. But he said he's going to keep the faith in the system. And then I did quite a long reply, I guess. But the thing is, I can't add too many players because there are a load of good players out there. And I'm aware if I did 10 more players that are good, there'd still be another 10 players that are still very good. So the idea is we are try and be careful which players we have and you have any selection from these players, no more than three greys, you should be doing all right. Regarding Sun, I said, look, we've only had four game weeks. Sun's had one good game week. As if he's done does well against Sheffield United and he's still playing as a forward after playing Arsenal away and Liverpool at home, we've still got 31 game weeks after that. Maybe we'll bring him in at that point. Uh, and then regarding Luton, the trouble with the keepers, whether Luton keeper or anyone else, Keepers are very much of a muchness and there isn't really any brilliant standout keepers at the moment. So I'm not too worried about the keepers. 
And then after the game, Sun did nothing, the Luton keeper did nothing. And so he said, rolled my transfer, <laughs> thank you. Which I thought was very nice. So um, the picture, I didn't manage to do it very well. That's supposed to be Richarlison and Sun. And they're laughing at the content creators and everyone that brought in Sun, especially if it was by selling Richarlison. Because in case you didn't know, Sun blanked and Charlton got a goal and an assist. So FOMO is a real thing in this game, the fear of missing out. Now, I know I like to try and make these videos short. I really do try to make them as short as possible, but I do rabbit it on a bit sometimes. Uh, hopefully you know just to skip ahead and see the bits you like and the bits you want to see if you do. Of course, if you just skip ahead, you may miss out some bit of important information. Right, let's jump ahead and see what happened for game week. We just had game week five and what our plans are for game week six. So review for game week five. First, the keepers. You'd have played one of these keepers. And uh, the average was only 1.8, so a very poor week. It was a very low scoring week globally. I think it was 44, the global average. So Armitage Shank said he's got Turner and Anana. They both got two points. I don't think the Luton keeper did any better, so it really didn't matter. But as you can see, no keeper that we've got in the system did very well. It just It's just hard to get to predict which keeper is going to be good. Regarding defenders, I'm assuming we play a 4-4-2. These are the defenders from the first page. They got an average of 7.2 if you had two of these. The second page defenders, again assuming two of these, you would have got an average of 8.2. The midfielders, as has been the case all through the season, midfielders and forwards tend to do better. You could have averaged 6.2 with two of these randomly. Second page of midfielders, look, they're all red. They've all been very poor. An average of only 3.8. As for the forwards... Very poor across the board. Most people captained Haaland. That was an average of 3.2 for whichever forward you had from this page. Chances are a forward from this page, an average of 3.7. For the scoring, I simply say 4-4-2. Of course, you could have any number of players across... The, well, not any number. Various different combinations of players across the various pages there. So the global average was 44. And I looked at various teams who are actually playing the system. And they're all within... Two or three points below or two or three points above. I think I did the worst. I think I might have got about 40. But I think everyone else did better than me. But that's because I sold Saka to buy in Fernandez. But that's because over the next few weeks, I think Fernandez is probably going to be better. And there was rumours that Saka was potentially injured. And it looked like there was going to be a price change. So I did it before the price change. So regarding this upcoming week, the goalkeepers. We have Edison... At home to Nottingham Forest, should be good. And then away to Wolves. So Edison's still all right, although Man City, if you look at all the stats, they should keep lots of clean sheets. The reality is they don't probably keep quite as many as they should do. He's 5.6. We have a new entry, Nick Pope. Newcastle have now hit the point in the season where they've got a nice run of games, or most of the games at nice. They're away to Sheffield United, who did score last week, so they could score. But Newcastle do have a very, very good defence. Then they're at home to Burnley. Away to West Ham could be difficult. Home to Palace. He is expensive, 5.5 million. But you may want to get him in. And we don't have many Newcastle players in the system. So uh, you wouldn't want Pope and Edison. If you got Pope, you'd probably then want a, obviously a much cheaper keeper as well. But Pope is the sort of player that you can play week, week in, week out. doesn't matter who they're playing. Ramsdale have marked as orange. So Arsenal have two very good keepers, Ramsdale and Raya. And at the moment, we don't know which one's going to be first choice, which one's going to be playing all the time. On top of that, Arsenal's next game is the North London Derby against Tottenham. Away to Bournemouth, but it is an away match. Home to Man City, then away to Chelsea. Ramsdale may not get any clean sheets realistically the next few weeks. So he would be fine to move on. So if you had the money and nothing else to do, Ramsdale to Pope this week, I think it'd be a good move. Onana is still in there at 5 million. I've not marked him as orange because Man United, surely they're going to get better. Surely they're going to get their defence sorted out and they're coming into a very nice run of fixtures. I wouldn't buy Onana now, but I wouldn't be desperate to sell him either. If I was on a wild card and I had him, I'd offload him. And regarding wild cards, if you find you've got lots of subs you want to be making, it's all right to play your wild card. Flecken, home to Everton, good chance of a clean sheet there, assuming he plays. Johnston, home to Fulham, Pickford away to Brentford. Brentford are very good at scoring, so a reasonably good chance that Pickford's not going to get a clean sheet. 
and then Turner away to Man City. Very good chance of not getting a clean sheet. Regarding the defenders, Trent I've marked as orange and sellable because he is injured. Currently at time of recording looks like he's probably not going to play. And they're home to West Ham. And if you miss that game, the next game is away to Tottenham. Tottenham are presumably going to score there. And then away to Brighton. Brighton are scoring for fun. So the next three game weeks, given he's a bit bit dodgy with is he going to play or not, and the games aren't great, but then they do get very good. If you want to offload him, that's fine. If you want to hold him, that is also fine, but he is very expensive. If he was a much cheaper player, I'd be more inclined to say he's all right to keep. Well, he is all right to keep, but there are other players you may want to get. Trippier I've marked as green. As I mentioned, Newcastle are coming into a very nice set of games. He's definitely worth having. Robertson, so introduce a new player. You may need to offload Trent. Robertson, going back a couple of years, him and Trent were neck and neck for who's getting the most assists. I know they're very different types of players, but Robertson does take corners. He does get assists. He's a, he's clearly a very good player. Um, I'm tempted to bring him in. I don't know if I will or not. I don't know if I can fit him in, but if I was on a wild card, I'd probably get Robertson. And... Not the next three game weeks, but after that, Liverpool have quite a nice run. Chilwell I've marked as blue, which means we'll be selling him soon. Or I'll be suggesting we offload him soon. If they're at home to Aston Villa, we don't know if Chilwell's going to play. He didn't start the last game. And then they're away to Fulham, away to Burnley. So Chelsea could well keep three clean sheets the next three games. So you don't need to sell him. But we're not sure what his minutes are going to be. He is sellable. Chelsea have not performed as well as we hoped they would. At the beginning of the season, I said I thought Chelsea and Tottenham had a good chance of doing well. Tottenham have done quite well. Chelsea have underperformed, but they absolutely could turn it around. A stupid man, I think he's fine to hold. Home to Bournemouth, good chance of some points there. James, it looks like he's going to be out for a few weeks. And when he comes back, Chelsea are in for a bad run. If you've got James, I'm saying sell him. Saliba, I've marked as sellable because they got the North London derby, then away to Bournemouth could be a clean sheet, then they got Man City and Chelsea. After that, the fixtures aren't particularly great, I think, not immediately afterwards, so you may want to offload him. And the Kanji Man City, he's still all right. And then, very, very amateurish here. I've got one player too many, but we'll be losing James next week. So Anderson... He's bench fodder. If you've got him, you may want to play him next week when he's got the double. But at the moment, he's just bench fodder, so don't worry about him. Right, the second page of defenders. Porro, worth keeping. Might not do very well this week. Gabriel, you may want to be offloading him because, again, in the next four games, reasonable chance of no clean sheets, possibly no returns at all. Udogi. Now, the reason I've not marked the Tottenham players is you might want to sell them. The next two game weeks are bad, but after that, they have a very nice run of fixtures. So if I had any Tottenham players, I would be holding them. Pinnock, home to Everton, good chance of a clean sheet there. Colwell, blue to say we'd be selling him in the future. So don't buy him, but he's all right to hold at the moment. And if you're desperate to get in another defender, you don't know who to get rid of, you can get rid of one of the blue ones. Botman, new defender coming in. Newcastle got a very nice run. So what you could do, and I saw people do it last year, is have three Newcastle players at the back. For example, Pope, Botman, Trippier. And when they keep a clean sheet, that's 18 or more points. Very, very nice. Of course, on the occasion, they let in a goal the first five minutes. That just makes for a rubbish weekend. So it's a big gamble, but it is something that you could do if you wanted to have a bit of fun. They are... Uh, bench fodder, even though he's got a double game week next week. And then Bulldog, bench fodder. Salah, obviously green, very, very good. There's lots of content creators trying to work out how to get him in. I've had him since the beginning. I know some of you have because I've seen your teams. He's a good player. Um, some people are going to have to sacrifice some good players to get him in. Liverpool, as I said, are coming up to a good run. Salah is one of these players that doesn't matter who Liverpool are playing, he's got a reasonable chance of getting a return. Rashford, still green coming up. Saka, I sold Saka because he's got some worse fixtures coming up and there was an injury concern. As it happens, he was all right. Odegaard, Fernandez, Madison, Martinelli. I'm saying you could be offloading him if you wanted to. He's currently flagged as injured, possibly not playing. If I had Martinelli, I'd be very tempted to offload him. 
and buy another midfielder, obviously. But you may want to buy a cheaper midfielder to improve on your defenders or else swap them for the likes of Fernandes or something like that. And then Foden, Foden's a good player. Second page, Sterling, don't need to sell him now. Villa at home could do selling away to Fulham Burnley. Next three fixtures could do very well, but after that, not so good. And Bremo's got three of the next four fixtures. He could do very well. I think he's worth having. So if you wanted to sell, for example, Martin Ito and Bremo, that would be a good move. Matoma at home to Bournemouth, very nice. Eze's got a couple of nice fixtures coming up. Gibbs White, expensive bench, bench fodder. He is a good player, but he's quite expensive. So depends how your team works out. And then Casemiro is also bench fodder. Lerma, um, he's uh, he's sellable. <laughs> I just realised I'm not. I'm still on the Bournemouth colours look, but Lerma is absolutely sellable. And then Nakumbu is bench fodder because Lerma is bench fodder and he's now bench fodder. That's Marks is injured, may not even be playing, so he's fine to move on. Regarding the forwards, Harland still marked his green. He's still worth having. Jesus Watkins. Wilson. Now I know Watkins is way to Chelsea and home to Brighton. They could both be tough fixtures, but then Villa have a very nice run. So I'd be absolutely holding on to Watkins if I had him, unless I particularly wanted to make other changes and I wanted to sell him for somebody much cheaper. Wilson's interesting. So at the beginning of the season, didn't know if you're going for Wilson or Isaac. Isaac got some good points game week one, so lots of people moved to Isaac. Wilson was less favourable. But Wilson's actually, I think, returned in three of the five games so far. So it looks like Wilson may have been the better choice after all. And Isaac's not in the system. So we did all right there. Darwin, he's a lot of fun. If he starts, or even if he doesn't, he's at home to West Ham. West Ham are good this season. But yeah, he's all right. Jackson, I know a lot of people are selling Jackson because he's been very disappointing. Jackson and Darwin are very similar in that they should get lots of points. It's just that they don't. They get in good positions and they manage to hit the crossbar or the sidebar or just balloon it over the top entirely. So if you wanted to sell Jackson, you could do uh, 7 million, free up some money. I've got Jackson. I'm probably not going to sell him this week, but I can't promise. Guiding the second page of forwards, Alvarez is good. Solanke's Bournemouth do have some nice games coming up shortly, I think, and he's quite cheap. Vissa, home to Everton and away to Forest two weeks later. Home to Burnley, so very nice fixtures there. Morris is green simply because home to Wolves this week and then got a double game week next week. I would only get him in if you could afford it because you have the transfer. There's nowhere I'll take a minus four to get in Morris. And you'll find this week and definitely next week, a lot of content creators will probably be getting a bit excited about Morris. And then at the end of the game, we could have got three points and they'd be saying, shouldn't have got him, never learned the lessons. So don't go crazy over Morris. If you can get him in, fine, but it's it's not worth breaking the bank over or breaking your team over, rather. Jao Pedro, home to Bournemouth, might be all right there. Adibayo, bench fodder. Mubama, he's worth selling because he's not even playing, unfortunately. So he's bench fodder, but bench fodder that's worth selling. Right, the goalkeeper. The first goalkeeper you see that you've got goes on your bench, which means the other player... You play. So if you've got Turner, wait to Man City, put him on your bench. If you don't have Turner but you have Pickford, Pickford's on your bench. They're the two keepers I've got, which means Turner's on my bench and I'll be playing Pickford. The next one to bench would be Ramsdale, I'm suggesting. North London Derby, I think Tottenham are probably going to score. I think Onana away to Burnley's got more chance than Ramsdale at home to Tottenham. And we don't know if Ramsdale's going to play anyway. He probably will. Johnson then at home to Fulham. Flecken at home to Everton. Good chance of a clean sheet for those two. Pope away to Sheffield United. Quite a good chance of a clean sheet there. Man City at home to Forest. Good chance of a clean sheet. Regarding the other players, and this is where I put my glasses on because I'm getting old. There we go. This is the suggested bench order. So the first player you see that you've got goes position three on your bench. The second one position two. The first one position one. These are just suggestions. If you want to do something different, that's absolutely fine. And just make sure it's legal. You can't have three midfielders, three forwards or three defenders on the bench. So James, he's injured anyway. You should be offloading him. But in case, for whatever reason, you don't, because maybe you're going to wildcard next week and you, you don't care, he'd be on your bench. 
then Mbama, Lerma, Bulldog, Adebayo, Bayer, Nakamba, Gibbs White, Solanke, Anderson, Pinnock, Casemiro, Watkins, Porro, Udoggy, <laughs> Colwell, Chilwell, Gabriel. Now, some of these are flagged as potentially injured, in which case they wouldn't be playing anyway. So the first row, the bottom row, they're kind of all bench fodder. The next row up, because of their fixtures, I've got them where they are. Hopefully you've got, hopefully three, possibly at least, hopefully at least two of these are now on your bench. But if you haven't, we have to start putting good players on your bench. My suggested order is Saliba, Botman, Morris, Robertson, Trent, Akanji, Jao Pedro, Madison, Martinelli. So I am favouring attacking players over defending players because we're getting an awful lot of goals at the moment this season. It's harder for defenders to get points. Vissa, Darwin, Jackson, Jesus, Sterling, Odegaard, Estupinan, Trippier, Eze. And there are 10 players I've not listed because if you've got them, you're definitely playing them. Regarding the captain, the obvious choice, Haaland should be wearing the old mule hat. He's by far going to be the most popular captain choice. However, if you don't have him or you want to mix things up a bit, Salah should be a good choice. Matoma's an interesting punt. I think he could get a decent score this week. Adkud Mbremo, Adkud Saka, possibly. Um, North London derbies, any derby is difficult to gauge as well. And possibly as an outside choice. So I'd suggest make one of these your captain and one your vice captain. Haaland is by far the safest choice. But do whatever you want to do. That's fine. And um, regarding the picture, because of all the sun hype last week and then it was Sterling the week before, Chilwell week one. Look, it's just, it's just FOMO. There are some people play this game and their biggest emotion is the fear of missing out because they haven't got such and such a player. And there's a psychological thing to do with the grass is greener on the other side. So you might really, really want this player over there. So you sell a player to get another player. But the player you've got is all right. So um, it's an interesting emotion. Hopefully by following this series, you can be somewhat a little bit more relaxed and not worry about things so much. Just enjoy the weekend doing whatever it is you want to do. So there we have it. Another, another long video. I really do try to get these short. I am sorry about that. Feel free. I won't be offended if you whiz backwards and forwards because it saves you time. But also, if you let it play, that's obviously very nice for me as well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a good game week six. Bye.